Today we're going to talk about dimensional analysis and let's start our conversation with E equal mc squared. And uh, when we talk about E equal mc squared, we are talking about uh, dimensional analysis. Why is that? Because Einstein wasn't sure uh, whether um, Oh, oh, Einstein actually wrote e equal to mc n, n or n, 1, n or is 2, n is 3, Einstein wasn't sure, and n is uh, 4 and so on, Einstein wasn't sure. So, he used dimensional analysis to figure out that it, n is actually n is actually 2. So, dimensional analysis as you see very powerful, a very powerful tools for physicists to discover a new equation. And today we are going to use, we are going to discover an equation by using a dimensional analysis. Okay. So, what is dimensional analysis? It's, uh, it's allow us to explore, explore uh, physical quantity. So, what is physical quantity? Give yourself an object that can be measured that can be quantified that can be quantified by measurement i have some height over here uh, this is double than this this is triple than this and and this is quadruple than this so we're going to call it double and this is triple and this is quadruple all right, you can call it anything. You can call it two meter, or you can call it four meter. You can assign with any value, and this is then this has to be four meter because this is double. Then it has to be six meter because this is triple, and then this has to be um, eight meter because this is quadruple. Why this is important? The scientists, when they have to discover the equation for distance and equation for time, these are the equations. Uh, so they have to start with the high, start with the hypothesis. So, so let's say hypothesis. Our hypothesis is uh, time is proportional to the falling uh, the height of a falling body is square root. So now then what do we want to explore? First we're going to find out that if uh, if you drop a ball if you drop a ball from two meter above the ground, okay, and it takes I don't know it takes ten seconds. Um, then, how much, what height do you have to drop it so that it takes double time? And um, and let's see. And uh, the hypothesis would be our hypothesis would be not double, not even triple, quadruple. And let's figure it out because the square root of so we said that time is the square root of uh, h. So time is the square root of two. All right. And then this is time is the square root of h. So, time is the square root of 8 and the square root of 8 is um, uh, the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. So, 2 is square root of 2. So, you see double, all right. So, it, uh, you have to quadruple the height to double the falling time, get it? Now, it does not have to be 2 meter, it can be 4 meter. Then this has to be, this has to be 8 meter and then th this has to be uh, 12 meter and this has to be 16 meter. And everything else is going to be same. As you see, instead of the square root of 2, the square root of 4, and instead of the square root of 8, the square root of 16. And everything else is going to be same. t is equal to 2 and t is equal to 4. Double. Okay. All right. Now, what we want to explore is uh, now if it takes actually 10 seconds to, to, to fall 4 meter, you see, or I don't know. Um, if you want to change it to some value else, let's say 500 meters, uh, four meter. Let's, say, let's let's play with the uh, let's play with the small value. So four meter. Then uh, then what do we want to find? How much time is it going to take? 14 second, 17 second, or 20 second? One, two, three. I have uh, three options: 14 second, uh, 17 second. Or 20 second, 14 second, 17 second, or 20 second. All right, this is one, two, three. This is one, two, three. All right, so who is one? Who is one? You, 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 you uh, who is one? Who is one? You quadruple. So if you double the distance, if you double the distance, is it going to be, is it going to take 20 second? No, we already, we already confirmed that. But how do you know whether it is 14 or 70 seconds? Oh, well, that's fine. Uh, you don't know, have to know the physics. You can do it by math. So, proportion. So, what do you know? Time over um, height. So, square root of uh, square root of h and time over the square root of h. 
So time 10 seconds and it takes, um, I don't know, uh, 4 is equal to time. That's what you want to find and is square root of uh, 8. All right, let's see. So, yeah, uh, square root of 4x is equal to uh, 10 square root of 8. So, 2x is equal to 10 square root of 8. So, x is equal to 10 square root of 8 over 2. So, x is equal to 5 square root of 4 square root of 2. So, x is equal to 10 square root of 2, which is approximately 14. So, it takes 14. All right, now let's say 17, the other one. This one takes 14 seconds. Now let's see whether this one uh, takes uh, 17 seconds or actually how much does it take. So now let's uh, start with, um, uh, with, with this one. So time over height uh, and um, how much time. We want to find how much time and the uh, height. All right, okay. Uh, height. Okay, so the time is 10 second takes a square root of 4. Um, how much time does it take for uh, for uh, 12, right? Triple 12. So 2x is equal to 10 square root of 12. So um, x is equal to uh, 5, 5 square root of 12. Uh, so, x is equal to 5, 4, 3, x is equal to 10 square root of 3, which is approximately 17. So, that means you have to triple the distance uh, to get 17. And what about this one? Do you really have to quadruple the distance? to get the double the time. Yeah, of course, you have to quadruple. We already proved that, but you can show it again. So, the time and the height is equal to time and the height. So, the time is 10 second uh, for 4 meter is equal to, we want to find the time and for uh, absolutely uh, 16 meter, 16 a meter. So, this is uh, two, uh, 10 over 2 is equal to uh, t over 4. So, 2 t is equal to 40. So, t is equal to 20. So, this one was not too bad. Now, we are going to do dimensional analysis. So, these actually uh, allow uh, Sir Isaac Newton, of course, to write v i t plus half a t square and 2 d square root of 2 d over g. All right. So, these are the equations and these equations was uh, possible because of the dimensional analysis and that's what we're going to do right now. So, we're going to do the dimensional analysis. So, dimension, you remember the dimension for dimension for length. Dimension for length is equal to L. Dimension for time is equal to T. And dimension for mass is equal to uh, m and dimension for uh, for example dimension for velocity is velocity is distance over time so length over time and um, acceleration acceleration is velocity over time so, the velocity is uh, length over time uh, over time and there is a time of course. So, there is a time. So, this is um, length over time is square. So, to precisely write it this is often written as L 1 m 0 um, m 0 and t 0 all right. So, the mass is 0 and the time is 0. This one is time length is 0 mass is 0. This one mass length is 0 the time is uh, the time is zero. This one 
length the time is negative one because you move it up mass is zero and uh, the mass is zero okay good and this one you write it length t negative two and mass is zero okay so you're going to use this to uh, to analyze that uh, one more thing i want to tell you there are two types of acceleration god made man made uh, let's say god made man made god made is acceleration due to gravity so for example earth is 9.8 meter per second square moon for example 1.6 meter per second square man-made acceleration uh, god made acceleration you cannot change it man-made acceleration you can change it for acceleration 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 of your car of your car uh, can you change it yeah you hit the gas when mr barry crossing the road make sure you hit the brake so acceleration goes to zero mr barry's life is saved all right so now we're going to derive the equation for a falling body using the dimensional analysis okay so time so the time is equal to we're going to write all the quantity so the length we're going to say length is alpha instead of one we're going to say alpha mass we're going to say this is beta and gravity we're going to say this is gamma okay the time of a falling body what does that mean if you drop a ball it takes time for a ball to hit the ground and that depends on of course length because the height that depends on probably mass or probably not we don't know and that of course depend on gravity if there is no gravity is ain't gonna fall all right so time and this is left side left hand side has to be equal to right hand side so the left hand side you know this is second and right hand side you know this is meter as a unit for this one is meter as a unit for this one is kg and as a unit for this one is meter per second is squared so left hand side is equal to right hand side now they are not the same but we have to make it same so t is equal to all right so uh, length um, uh, alpha mass gamma and gravity has to be written as because man-made gravity or god made gravity are the same thing gravity is velocity over time and velocity is distance over time over time so the gravity is then acceleration due to gravity this is the symbol d over t square that means length over time square all right very good so then we're going to replace this one by length uh, gamma time gamma okay good so our observation is the mass the beta has to be zero beta has to be zero discovered by uh, by Galileo that the falling body doesn't depend on on the mass if you drop a rock and feather at the same time they should touch the ground at the same rate at the same time because we ignore the air we ignore the air whole lot of places uh, don't have air for example moon doesn't have air okay all right the the battery is zero alpha times gamma alpha time alpha plus alpha plus gamma is equal to has to be equal to zero as well because you want everything to cancel and t and t left side is t and right side is t okay so let's see what we can do t 
is equal to um, all right this one is go to 0 because beta is 0 uh, this one go to 1 it doesn't go to 0 1 because m raised to 0 is 1 so l uh, and then uh, alpha m 0 l gamma and this is 2 by the way 2 because 2 2 gamma this is t negative 2 gamma all right so this is t is equal to this is 1 so this is alpha plus gamma this is negative 2 gamma so t is equal to alpha plus gamma is equal to 0 so this is 0 and t negative 2 gamma let's see what is gamma is equal to so this is there is only 1 and there is negative 2 so 1 minus negative 2 1 is equal to 1 is equal to negative 2 gamma so negative 2 gamma is equal to 1 gamma is equal to negative 1 half so what is then this one if that's the case this one would be alpha is equal to beta is 0 so alpha and gamma we see that negative half is equal to 0 so then alpha is equal to positive half so we discover that alpha is equal to positive half so t is equal to this is 1 and this is t negative 2 and then this is negative 2 where did you get negative 2 right here so this is this is cancel minus minus cancel so t is equal to t all right proof now i'm going to give you a second proof second proof is the discovery over here so we have t is equal to l alpha m beta and g gamma so t is equal to l is half the alpha is half alpha is half beta is zero beta is zero and uh, gamma is negative half gamma is negative half so t is equal to l is square root of two l raised to half is square root of l and g raised to negative half is square root of g so the time of a falling body is l square root of g and there would be a constant and that's it and this is how sir isaac newton discovered the time is actually square root of 2d over square root of g which is pretty close